Then, of course, you know, the sequence of events was very rapid. Um, Srebrenica, three weeks after the Serb, uh, after the Bosnian Serbs released the peacekeepers, they overrun Srebrenica. Um, the reports begin to come in that there are all these men missing. Um, I start working with the UNHCR and the ICRC in Washington to try to identify where are these men. I mean, you know, and, and nobody was able to get access to them. There was everything was shut down. There was a refugee camp in Tuzla where refugees were beginning to trickle in, but no evidence of what had happened to these men. And so the uh, um, the ICRC representatives and and UNHCR representatives. Um, worked with me to uh, mount the mission that I conducted at the end of July of 1995, basically to go there with the authority of the U.S. government, which I had to get, was not easy to get, to conduct a really th an investigation of those who were, uh, who were f beginning to trickle in um, to, to Tuzla. So we, we flew in. Um, by helicopter to Tuzla, and the situation in Tuzla was very chaotic when we arrived. There was still fighting in the hills. There were shells that were going off, uh, not right there, but all the all the refugees were assembled on the tarmac and the, on the airport. You know, and the, frankly, there was a real fear that it, a shell might be lobbed in that would just wipe out the refugees, and this would be. Another catastrophe, it would be similar to what happened a month later in the Sarajevo market, of course, when a shell was lobbed in and killed a lot of people in the marketplace. So, so there was a hasty effort to move refugees as they arrived off, off the airport um, where they were sitting ducks. And I, I spent two days uh, interviewing about 20, 25, I can't remember exactly what the number was, it may have been a little bit fewer than that, uh, refugees, along with several members of my bureau who were with me, and Richard Holbrook's son who accompanied me on this trip. I mean, Holbrook said, I, I want to show solidarity with you, Shattuck, so I'm going to send my son. His son was dying to go on the trip anyway, and his son was very good. He was, he was a graduate student at that time. Um, so, I mean, you've got the cables on all of this, so you, you know the story, but I mean, basically we got this horrific uh, oral account by several, in two in particular, of these refugees. One, a, an older man who was a cripple and, and another a younger teenage guy who, who told the stories in graphic detail about, um, about how they'd been lined up in, in in these warehouses um, and put together with a lot of other refugees, how there were uh, other men who had been um, separated from the women and the women who had been sent off by bus. Uh, anyway, so the account that I got was very, very graphic. Um, all the things that had happened um, and then the final thing, which was marching these men one by one with blindfolds uh, into the edges of a large pit um, and and then each of them being shot. Uh, but the shots apparently were not accurate in several cases, so these guys escaped and they, they made their way back with a rather moving account of how the cripple got back because he, you know, he had his own problems with mobility. He was wounded on top of that and he was an older man. And he took a long time to get back, and he saw many of the atrocities that I reported on his, on his way back. Anyway, I won't recount all of those here because you've got them in the cable, but suffice it to say, when I returned to Washington uh, and the same um, set of meetings continued that, that were uh, called, had been called daily by the Deputy Secretary Strobe Talbot, where all these debates had been going on previously about U.S. foreign policy, U.S. policy toward Bosnia. You could literally, you know, hear a pin drop in the room.